Hey guys, Nick here from Toad Hall Books and Records. Time for, uh, well, it's been a while since we've done a uh, record re rediscovering vinyl video with my buddy Rye. We've been doing some upgrades. We've got, I have a studio now that I have to reconstruct and we got better equipment and we kind of took this time to get ourselves all straightened out here. So, Yeah, it feels good. I've been, we've been, we've had a kind of a, rough little busy patch there but getting back to it and getting back in the swing of things i'm excited to do um our artist this week we are doing amy winehouse who um i've always known that name and i know she was uh popular and passed away and, and had you know kind of an up and down career with a lot of different things but i never really had listened to her and when you brought her name up um i was kind of excited to see what she had to offer because uh, anyone that's ever spoken about her as an artist has always spoken very highly of her mm -hmm. um, in a lot of different ways so I was kind of excited to see um, what she brought to the table um, well, you want to Nick let them know what what album yeah. we're looking at here so the record we are taking on this week is Amy Winehouse at the BBC uh, unfortunately my shrink wraps tore a little bit here but uh, it's a triple LP package uh, first time ever on vinyl, triple 180 gram. Uh, this came out, um, originally in May of 2012, uh, mm. but it was never on vinyl. It was CD only back in 2012. So the vinyl press is just from May of this year, May 7th, the vinyl actually got pressed. So. And actually, I dig the I dig the the photo, the cover on that one. It's got that cool red and black look to it. It's it's cool looking. And when you when we uh, decided to do this album, I, I looked at them like thirty nine songs or something crazy like that, isn't there? Because it's the triple. Yeah, he, yeah. We we're, we had this discussion. He's like, "How the hell are we going to review or go over all these songs?" I was like, I don't "Yeah," know. I was like, <laughs> "So we we decided to pick a handful." Yep. Um, we each picked a, a few to, to do. Um, I'm probably going to stick with the two that um, kind of stuck out to me uh, with that. But I kind of want to talk. Do you have a little bit of background on her, Nick? Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, I don't really know much about her as, as a person. So obviously she's British. Uh, she these are this is a culmination of her live specials from 04 to 09. She passed away. It was, you know, while we were reviewing this, we passed the 10 year anniversary mark of her passing. Uh, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, she she's part of the Twenty Seven Club, which is I don't know, I don't know if it's ah, good or bad. Forever Twenty Seven. Yep. So yeah. Hen Hendrix, Joplin, Morrison, Kurt Cobain, and Amy Winehouse all died at twenty seven years old. Uh, so she's part of that club, an elite club, I guess. Um, and she battled with the, she battled with addiction, right? It was yeah. addiction problems that kind of caught up with her. Okay. A lot of alcohol was a big factor of it. I think that was the lead. And then, you know, once you get into that, it's the other ones kind of pile on. And uh, she was looking pretty rough in her last few months, weeks. Uh, yeah. You know, she was just, she had some demons. Uh, sure. But uh, back to this kind of collection. So this is a culmination of of stuff from the BBC from 04, no, 03 to 07. So I'm sure as you're listening through like me, you caught some stuff that's like, oh, I really like this. There's some you're like, ah, this, is, this is, you know, all right. Yeah. And then some you're like, whoa. And, and, and I and I, I, I don't know, I I wanted to see, and I, I don't usually do this, but I wanted to see what this album sounded like compared to what her recordings sounded like. Uh -huh. um, this is a, a live album. So I, if those of you that don't know, I'm a huge proponent of, of live performances. You know, I've mentioned before that the things that you can do in a studio nowadays are, are almost unfair. Mm -hmm. um, and and when you see a, an artist live, you can really tell if they are a studio created band or group or artist. Um, I listened to the first song on on this album. I'm also a big proponent of first songs on albums. I think that the first title song. the first song on an album really sets the tone uh -huh. um and that song that song's called stronger than me yep. and huge huge fan of of that song um when i listened to her i listened to her for a little while and then i wanted to hear the actual recordings of it and it's actually 
a lot different. Um, this album was a lot different than her actual recording stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't listen. Obviously, I didn't listen to all 39 tracks, but <laughs> yeah. the stuff that I heard, the, the live stuff that I heard um, really really kind of dug and really kind of enjoyed with her, with the style of her vocals. Um, the song Stronger Than Me has an awesome beat to it. The band plays a great background to her. Um, they highlight her voice in a, in a very good way. Um, and, and I, you know, I, I kind of, I equated her to kind of like a seductress um, <laughs> okay. in like a strange way the way that she she sings the tonality in her voice it's very seductive it's got a low tone to it um she says the way she says certain words and pronounce pronunciates certain words uh or enunciates sorry um she definitely is attractive when it comes to a voice if that makes sense nick i don't know if that's making no, sense no absolutely it does yeah, she 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 seduced me with her voice, and I think that was kind of her persona. And someone that's never listened to her, have never even um, heard her hit songs or anything like wow. that, her radio hits, um, she seduced me with her voice. And, yeah. and there's only one other artist, um, I'm not comparing the two by any means, but there's only one other artist that has done that to me when they did a live style of album. And that was Lady Gaga when she did that Christmas album okay. with Tony Bennett. Yeah. Different, just completely different. But it, act, I mean, to me, that was Lady Gaga. Her voice was phenomenal on that album. And that's kind of how I, I kind of got the same feeling listening to this album as well, Nick. I, I enjoyed her tone. I enjoyed you know i had to look up some of the lyrics she is naughty <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's got some stuff like i'm like dang girl i, I gotta go to church after listening <laughs> to you but i kind of like what you're throwing down with some of that stuff you know she had no filter with with some of her lyrics and i appreciated that uh, especially with that style of music i couldn't agree more so i have a little different take on this album because i knew of heard songs i knew her hit songs i've listened to her you know kind of grazed the top of her see back in black is probably one of the a really good selling record in our store so we sell we move a lot of amy winehouse in our shop so but this sure. is a, something new and it's so this collection is a it's kind of a culmination so they did a, a tribute to amy and then they did amy winehouse bb sessions bbc sessions uh and they combined them which is why some okay. of these songs are on here two and three times. Rehab's on here yeah, I was gonna say, three I, times. Once we look, yeah, I looked at the the title there, the tracks, and I was like, oh, I see why there's so many songs. It's three different performances of that of that track. Yeah, they're different performances at different time periods, and so what I just naturally did was I picked. Um, I actually took like some of the songs I knew, like Valerie, which is one of my favorites, and I kind of played all three of them, and then I found my favorite. And I don't know if you caught any of these, but the lounge sessions from 07 were my absolute favorite. And that's not just Valerie. There's a sure. bunch of them on here. Uh, yeah. It was, she had a female vocal backup. She had, yeah. it was, it was total lounged out. So it was like, you know, la like cool guitar, drums. It was, it was just done very differently. Very, uh, mm -hmm just like lounge jazz music, but it was her singing sure. still. And it was so amazing that I think this, this is worth buying just for the lounge sessions. Honestly, I'm with you on that. Like I, the, the lounge kind of feel I, I liked in the sense of like, you can put this album on, um, you can put this album on while like you're cooking a good dinner for like, if you know, you're having a date over, so and you put this album on, like it's, so, it's so, going to set the mood in, in, a, in a very good way. <laughs> so we always if talk you, about if, what are you doing when you listen to this record, right? We always do that. Yeah. Look what yeah. I wrote. What are you doing? Cooking. Cook. Cooking. Yeah, for sure. If you're making, uh, uh, you know, a nice meal for a significant other, you know, for a special occasion yep. or or whatever you want to, you know, <laughs> have the this plan it's gonna set the mood in a very very good way I'm, I'm with you on that that loungy kind of feel it's something that you can put on um and and honestly it, it actually is a good talking point too because you know 
those other artists, when they talk about other artists, there's a certain level of understanding. For for example, when you hear other people, other stand-up comics talk about Norm MacDonald, rest in peace, my man, yeah. uh, Norm MacDonald, um, and when you hear people talk about Dave Chappelle, um, there, there's, there's a different tonality of how they speak about that person. Mm -hmm. And I have noticed that when I hear other artists talk about Amy Winehouse, they talk about her as if she's kind of like this deity in that kind of field of, of music. And, yep. you know, there's certain, there's certain people that kind of get above the corporate bullshit. I guess you can say when it comes to how to make an album and, you know, you have your, your middle level people that just follow what they're told, you know, kind of thing. I feel like Amy Winehouse is the artist on her label that transcends the corporateness mm -hmm. and she is allowed to create her music, sing her lyrics, no matter how raw or controversial they may be at times. It's kind of like Eminem in a sense where the label's not telling Eminem what to say and what not to say on his albums. You know right. what I mean? Like he yeah. he has hit this level where look, do what you do. Good. There's yeah. nothing we can do. Do what you do. We're happy with whatever we're gonna back with whatever you have. And I feel like that was kind of an Amy Winehouse kind of feel with this in sense. Some of the time, some of those lines and some of her lyrics, some of her bars, I was like Dang, that that's that is unique in this day and age when it comes to how you know they want to reach a, a such a wide variety of target to sell more records. Mm -hmm. I think Amy Winehouse kind of transcended that kind of nonsense and was able to kind of create her own music, which I'm all for. Yeah, I, I couldn't have put it better. I mean, she did her own thing. Uh, I'm glad that I turned you on to something that was missed i mean i, I well, kind of missed it and... he really nick you've never turned me on ever she has turned me on with her vocals. she seduced you with <laughs> Must her be, voice. let me be clear yeah <laughs> no they i'm with you I, i'm glad i listened to it in fact i i really i don't i i don't love her um radio style recordings i i don't love the the poppiness it's it's not my favorite i love the jazzy lounge feel that she has i think it hit it touches her or it mixes with her voice in such a great way i i truly wish that we didn't live in a society where we handcuff artists and not allow them to put out the stuff that fits their style the best you know i i want lady gaga to come out with a jazz album i mean she went yeah. to juilliard for vocal in in jazz vocal like allow her to do her craft and, and let her be at her best, you know, and I just, I wish we did that more often because this album to me was awesome in that sense. I would put this on while I'm just hanging out, having some drinks, you know, it, it, it is perfect for that. Absolutely. Perfect. Very good. good talking points. You can talk about some of the lyrics that she brings up, you know, some <laughs> of the things she says, and it's, it's, it's cool. I liked it. It's kind of a punk rock jazzy kind of feel to it where I don't give a damn what you're going to say. I'm going to sing this lyric. You know, it's, I, I appreciate that about her. Any other standout tracks, right? Um, the other, you know, the other standout, this albums for me where, um, I put it on, I probably, honestly, I probably did listen to all 39 tracks. You know, it, it's yeah. been a few weeks since we've done this. Um, and I'll throw it on from time to time. Um, I, I don't have one that I think my favorite was stronger than me. That was by far oh. my favorite. Okay. Um, but I'm with you on the different sounds of the different like years, different live recordings. Yep. Yeah. The different years. I, I liked that. That's a, I've never heard another album that's done that. And I think it's unique in that way. Um, I think overall track wise stronger than me was my favorite, but when it comes to just the rest of the album, I just enjoyed the lounginess of it. I didn't really, I, I just had it on, you know, and I yeah. just, I just liked it. That, that was it. I'm not going to sit in my car and jam it or put it on my headphones, but when I have people over or something, I'm going to put it on and just have it in the background, you know, throw it on a playlist kind of thing and, and just enjoy it when it pops up. Well, that's what we needed to know. And that's what we're here to do is turn yeah. 
tell people what's out there, what's available, because there's so much. Obviously, it's easy to miss any release, any artist at this point in time. So, Amy Winehouse live at the BBC, three triple LP, sixty-one dollars. We have it on our website, ToadHallOnline.com. We got a bunch of them. Because, like I said, Amy Winehouse does a very good job selling through our store, even though she's been dead now for over 10 years, unfortunately. So. Yeah, that's crazy. I remember when it happened. That's crazy. It's been 10 years. That's wild. Yeah, I, I suggest it, guys, if you haven't uh, checked it out, you know, it's something that um, I think, you know, you and your significant other would enjoy to, to have on. And, and I think um, it's it's quality. She's got a great, unique voice. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So I appreciate you uh suggesting that one and i'm glad hey i'm glad we're back doing this yep. um back to our regular schedule and uh we'll have some more for you if you haven't checked out any of the other um uh rediscovering vinyls that we've done uh please check those out we've got a lot of good artists um before we go <laughs> our first episode we did was grandson yep. uh, death of an optimist and that has become one of my favorite albums of all time i, I actually bought one of the vinyls um you went and saw him in concert can yeah. you please just share what that was like um i am jealous of that and <laughs> when he comes around phoenix i'm definitely gonna yeah. go check him out it was it it's uh it's way better it's even better than the album in person uh with a live band a live drummer a live guitarist a live bassist grandson singing it and it explodes i mean those drops instead of being all electronic it's a good deal of just banging drums and guys just wailing on the guitar. And it's just, it exploded on stage. Like think about like sure. rage against the machine is how like sure. it, it just, the music culminates and it blows. It just, it blew my dad it away. Builds and my builds. Dad away. Everyone, sure. everyone was awed by it. It was unbelievable. If you're, if you're blowing Larry away, yeah, then that's a, uh, that, that's saying something. <laughs> yep. My dad that was is impressed. Saying something. He was impressed. Awesome. By Awesome. So yeah, that one I'm jealous of. I'm glad it was a good time. I'm glad he plays with the full band as well. I was curious about that because um, I know a lot of his or his recordings are, sound pretty electronic. But as a band, I bet it sounded badass. Oh so. man, cool. I hope his next album's like that. Like I hope he brings the band into the next album. We'll see. Sure. We'll see. Well, cool, man. Well, hey, good to see you again. Good to do this again. Uh, we'll be back next uh, next, next week, week with a, another one. Yeah. Um, we don't usually reveal who we're going to do. No, yet, we're not going to we'll, do it. Uh, we'll, we'll be surprised next no, week. We'll, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, thanks again, guys, for listening. Please subscribe, hit the like button, do all that stuff. And uh, we'll see you again. See ya.